Well, here we are. We are the Canon Robotics team. I'm introducing this video because um, I have very little to do with this project. I have almost zero to do with this project. So um, we are the Royal Ghostbusters. We are 21535. That is our uh, first tech challenge number. These two will make giggling sounds because everybody's <laughs> uncomfortable on camera. And uh, we're sorry, this is just how it has to roll. And we hope we can entertain you. Now, the reason why we're writing this is where uh, the behavior specialist here at Canon uh, knows that we write grants and do community service. And these are two of my grant writing ladies. We're missing another young lady who's helping us is Eliza. She's our, gonna be our production editor. She is special and she has skill. And then Ariana is sick today. So her video kind of got, you know, bypassed and we're gonna have to do that with somebody else because none of us want COVID or whatever head cold that young lady has. Now, therapeutic dogs in schools can help in many ways. We've done a lot of research on this and it's not funny. We have research to do. <laughs> I had to research this to make sure that you all know what you were supposed to be doing. Now, uh, we are working on social skills. I know as a teacher after the pandemic, it's been a hot mess and not to be mean to the kids, but it the kids come back angry, frustrated. And um, we feel that having that animal in the building will really help the situation out and give some, you know, added brev added love to the building. Did you just have your mouth open in the middle of my video <laughs> behind I digress. Now, it also helps with stress and anxiety of also staff members. I'm taking it from the staff members perspective. I can't tell you how many people in this building quit regularly. We all come back to work, but we all quit regularly in dramatic fashion. Throw down on the floor, roll around type of quit. So I think that would really, really help. What? Way too many. Way too many, exactly, way too many. When it comes to confidence, uh, having animals around, especially dogs, it's, it builds confidence in everybody um, that interacts with that animal because it's just something that humans and animals, they bond and it's been great. And that's what I've learned in my research. See, I'm being helpful. <laughs> and also with focus, it helps the kids focus a little bit better when you're doing it with an animal with you because you're, as the dog is with you, it, it helps you focus on the actual activity and what you're doing. Uh, literacy, we can have, have the dog we can read to the dog. That would be helpful because uh, kids like fight like tooth and nail to try to read. Um, so that, I think that would be very helpful. Um, emotional regulation. Now, I know for a fact I lose my mind regularly. Kids can attest to this, but I care. And I hopefully having an animal in my life and one that I can go and relax and pet and have that deregulate, like uh, what is that de-escalation? would be very helpful, even for myself, not just for the kids. And when it comes to school attendance, I'm, I look, I'd have a fun classroom. I'm mean, but I'm fun. And we do like ridiculous things, go-karts. I have a water pump and a gutter in my room right now. And with a water pump and a gutter, we do some fun stuff, but that's how you get a kid to come to school. And having a dog in the building and doing what we need to do. And ex excuse the man in the background of our video. <laughs> Because that's just robotics team. Everybody, robotics team, meaning this is what we deal with all the time. Anyway, um, I hope this is what the kids have taught me about what we've been doing and what is going on around us. And hopefully you'll consider us a, uh, a team. You're going to hear from Leanna Bell about this animal. And she's going to talk about what she did her research on. And now there's a phone call. And no, Minnie Coop, uh, she has a video. Actually, go into the phone. Go, ahead. go into the phone. Cheers room students speaking. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, we're going to go to our next section, which will be somebody else. Thank you so much for your attendance. Hi, my name is Eliana. Today we're going to be talking about why Canon Junior High School needs a service dog. I mean therapy dog, my bad. Oh my gosh, my brain just scrambled. Don't worry. Um, as well as many other people are going to be talking about why we need it, what is it for, and who's taking care of it, of course. Um, unfortunately, some people just have trouble with their emotions, and especially students and teachers. Yes, I said teachers. I know you're thinking, teachers don't have problems, but yes, they do. A therapy dog is a really good way to bring teachers, students, and every type of staff in Canon, a way to support each other. Yes, you don't need to support each other by knowing each other, but having a therapy dog around can get everyone to bring up their moods and just sufficiently like get to know other people. Counselors might not be able to help people or even the students with their emotions, 
not even parents. So the next best option is what? Nothing? No. A therapy dog is going to help so many students come together and as well as learn about their emotions and just have a better time figuring out who they are. And honestly, I wish I had that when I went here. Yes, I don't really go here, but you know, I'm still here for the support because I love this school with my whole heart. Yes, I love this school. Don't worry about it. You want to come out with me? My friend's going to help me out and talk about why we need a service dog. This is Ariana. She's... Hi. <laughs> We're nervous. Don't get I'm me not. wrong. <laughs> We're like, we get, we get jitters sometimes. Don't worry about it. Jitters? Jitters, yes, jitters. We'll have her. Another yeah. piece of money. Exactly. Um, it also could help with anxiety. I know a lot of kids do feel and suffer from anxiety, especially at school. Stress can lead to anxiety and depression. That is one of the number one causes of depression, actually. And yes, you think, oh, well, depression is not real. Yes, it is. Well, another reason we need it is because you know, some students just want to see a dog. And honestly, I kind of wish I had a dog here at this school. Because I feel like my mood would just be happier, better, smiling all the time, right? Like, I would feel better with like, a just dog. Just imagine seeing the dog, like, sitting here, like, at like, the front desk, just waiting for you to, like, pet like, it. Exactly. Like, exactly. Love it. I feel like when you need to talk about it, or even if you have behavior troubles, that getting a dog or service or a therapy dog can just help you sufficiently feel better. I know that some students struggle with mental health and even teachers. So it's important to bring out at least something that can sufficiently improve it. So there's stress, anxiety, depression. depression. Hi, I'm Leslie Galvin. I'm the principal at Cannon Junior High School, and I fully support having a therapy dog here on the Cannon campus. So many of our students suffer trauma in their personal lives, and having that therapy dog here to help support them and heal and provide that sense of comfort while they're here at school, I think would increase our our attendance rate and give sense, uh, kids a sense of belonging here at Cannon. Hi, I'm Aliana. Again, I'm Leanna Bo. Um, we're going to talk about you, the, talk about the needs for a therapy dog. Um, some of the things you may need is like training, so we could do that for the dog. You're also going to need a bed, water, food, treats. Also, it needs to be healthy. Also, it has to be certified, like certification. So it has to be, how you say, like just real. Not like a real dog, you know, my just kidding. I'm just joking. Um, but no, there's a bunch of things that go into making the well, go into making these videos, and as well as getting a therapy. We, we're gonna need poop bags, toys, toothbrushes, brushes. There's so many things that we have to analyze and go into, and there's a lot to talk about. We're not going to have all the time to talk about it in this video, but there will be a lot of requirements for the dog that we will give. Mm -hmm, exactly. Like, let's name some more things. Um, a leash, a vest, blankets. Collars. We need insurance for the dog's health, nails, clippers. There's more stuff, and it keeps going on. There's such a big list. That right now we can only name a few of them, but that doesn't really matter because the therapy dog is going to be staying with Miss Shannon and sometimes Miss Cheer. They're going to be switching between the behavior office and as well as Miss Cheer's room, depending if it gets too loud, too noisy. You got to make sure you walk with the dog. What else do you have to do? Make sure you take it out so you can go see the restroom. Right take it places so like it's not just sitting in one spot all day. It has to be groomed, like it has to take baths, you have to wash it. 
there's so many things you need to get sold. You need to make sure the food's good. Make sure the dogs don't have like bugs on it, stuff like that. Exactly. Make sure it's healthy. Make sure that it has somewhere to sleep at night. Make sure that it has a good like attitude when you're training it. You also have to make sure it can socialize and as well as it's adaptable to many different places. Because if a therapy dog is not adaptable, then what are we going to do? We can't do much because unfortunately the dog can't really go anywhere. But also a good thing is to have a connection to someone. But maybe not someone, maybe like a lot of people. We also got to remember it's still a dog. It's not just, it's not, we're not, it's not like a human. It has feelings too. It's gonna miss the person or the people it's with. So we have to take that consideration. And it's hard for them to even think sometimes about that special person. And it's not gonna be the best for them. And we know that sometimes we're not able to be there all the time for it. But we're going to try our best. We're going to do everything we can so that Canon has a therapy dog. And we can just put this together and help kids, students, adults, and just make learning a good process, you know? Like, it just makes me excited thinking about how all the students are going to have better emotions, have better time thinking about a dog or maybe even focusing better at school. Um, it's hard sometimes when kids don't act like okay and you know their behavior is like really bad. So maybe it might improve behaviors, emotions, anxiety and all types of things that happen at school. It's also really good for mental health like we were yeah. talking about before. Mm-hmm. So it's not a big deal to some people, but for us, it's a huge deal. Because yeah. it's not only helping one person, it's helping a whole community of students, teachers, adults, staff. It's helping everyone. So and we want to make this a better community. Yeah. There's a lot of kids with mental health problems or mental, like, with their emotions that are really bad. So it can help with different types of things. Like, if kids have a medical condition and they feel like, really scared to talk about it. We have a bunch of different categories like what the therapy dog needs, why we need one, and more information just generally. Um, unfortunately, I know that sometimes it's, you're not able to provide a therapy dog, which we're really appreciative of this opportunity that we have. The reason why we need a therapy dog is because some students uh, just have trouble getting their emotions out there their feelings, talking about it, and so they turn to animals. I know that in some people's lives, maybe family life is difficult, or just in general, they're stressed about school, stressed about parents, or just stressed. Sometimes it could just be overbearing, and there's nothing you can really do about that. Hi there, my name is Shannon Powell. I am the behavior strategist at Cannon Middle School, and I will be the one that handle is the handler of the dog. It will live at Cannon with me while I'm at work, and then it will go home to my house where my husband, Richard, and I have three children, Chanel, Peyton, and Richard also. Um, they are 22, 15 and a half, and 14 and a half. We also have a dog named Max, and he is a special dog. He has diabetes. And he's blind, but he is a great, he has a great sense of humor. He gets along with everyone and everything. Um, He needs a little friend. So Mr. Max has a friend, his name's Franklin, and he is our tortoise that we inherited from my brother and their buddies. I have a big backyard um, with an area to run and play, also front yard with lots of room. Here at school on campus, we have different areas for the dog to um, to be able to visit and also to be able to um, 
provide support for kids when they need it. And also just as important it is for the kids, it's also beneficial for teachers and educators to have that same um, feeling of uh, having that emotional support animal here at school. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> Did it stop? <laughs>